In this presentation, we will continue on with part three of our partnership comprehensive problem where we will review form 1065, which will be the partnership income tax return and the minimum data it will take to get the return started. We'll start the initial setup of the return, get that minimum information that we will need in the return before we could start the data input process from the Excel worksheet that we have set up in prior presentations. Here is our form 1065. We are looking at this in tax software, the tax software being Lacert tax software. If you would like to follow along with the forms, you, we will provide the forms and you can also go to the IRS website and find the forms on the IRS website at irs.gov, irs.gov. Now, when we start the partnership, if it was a partnership that we had last year that we were using the same software for, then we should be able to roll forward or proforma or roll forward those numbers from the prior year into the current year, at which time we should be starting at uh, where we need to be with the name of the partnership, as well as the address and all that kind of setup information, the partner information as well. And we'll have the beginning balances that we'll have rolled forward into it. However, if we're starting uh, the client in the software this year, then we're going to be needing to enter the prior information into it. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to be looking at the kind of the minimal information you got to basically do to set up the information for the 1065. That's going to be the name of the organization. We're going to we're going to need the basis of the organization or what type of accounting system are we going to be using the and the address and then we're going to need partnership information. So let's then go into our detail into the client information. To start up, we're going to need the name of the partnership. We have a generic name here, the Comprehensive Problem 1. We're going to need the ID number, which will typically be formatted in this way. This is going to be a federal ID number that you will get from the IRS in order to set up the partnership. And it'll typically look something like this. And then we could have the primary contact. And this is going to be the primary contact person, which may be a partner within the partnership. I'm going to put James Smith here, which is going to be one of our partners. Then we're going to go down to the address. We're going to have the street address here. So I'm going to give the address. I'm going to, this is obviously not a, a real address, but 9425. This is going to be Sunset BLVD. This is a home for sale in Beverly Hills. If you're in the market for homes, very expensive homes in Beverly Hills. And this is going to be California. And we have the zip of 90210. Then we're going to say the business began. I'm going to say 0101 and 15. We're going to need the business code. We're going to pick the code 448110 and that's going to be clothing and that's going to be clothing and clothing accessories store. You do want to spend some time to pick the appropriate code because it can have an impact on the tax code in certain areas. Business activity I'm going to say clothing sales and clothing. We're going to say an accrual method. So we're going to say it's an accrual method. And that's what we'll keep to start. Now, if I go back up to the forms, then we're going to go to the forms. Now we have the uh, principal business activity, the principal product. We have the business code here. We've got the name with generic name and the address. We've got the employer identification number and the date business started. So you can see if you were, were continuing and doing doing this this partnership return for some and you it's the first year doing it but the partnership return had been done in the past you would have that information from the prior return which would be right here on the on the face of the 1065 that you could use to populate we then have the accrual status down here for the accounting method that we're going to be using the next thing we're going to need to push forward is going to be the partnership information we're typically going to need the partnership information so we're going to go to the partners then going to list out the two partners that we have the partner name I'm going to say is uh, Tim Jones so we have Tim Jones not time but Tim Tim Jones ID number would typically be the social security number so I'm going to have that we're going to put in an address once again address here 604 Walden Drive and that's also going to be in Beverly Hills California 90210 and so there we have that and we're going to say that the type is going to be an individual taxpayer and then it's important to pick the type of partner that we have we're going to say that these are going to be two general partners that are going to be working within the partnership so we're going to say it's a general partner 
also note that if I go back to the to the data input on this side, it was picked for us already, but we have a general partnership by default. The other options that you may have uh, would be the limited partnership, the limited liability company, the limited liability partnership. So those would be the common uh, items for it. We're going to be using the general partnership here. So we're going to go back to the partners. So we say that we have a general partner. So there is that. Now we're going to add another partner. We're going to say add. And this is going to be, what did I add, Tim? This is James Smith. James Smith. And also, I'm just going to put the 999s on the social security number. And then we have the address. And James lives at 527. This is not the real address, obviously. Palm Drive, Beverly Hills. California 90210 and James is also going to be a individual is an individual and it's going to be the general partner of our partnership and that's going to be the bottom line kind of information we need to get started with it now we're also going to be thinking about needing the beginning balances which if it was a continuing client we would roll forward from the prior uh, year tax return here we're going to enter it in we're going to enter basically the beginning balances into us into the system so we'll, we'll enter the beginning balances and we'll enter some of that information that would kind of roll forward because if you if you roll it forward something like depreciation schedules it can actually cause you a, a bit of a problem at the same time because that some of that information is already going to be populating as you do the data input so uh, we next time we're going to put some of those beginning balance numbers in there such as the balance sheet and we'll put in the depreciation schedules and see what that will generate and that often is going to be kind of like your starting point. If you were working on a, a tax return that basically is rolling form from the software last year, then you'll have those schedules will already kind of be there, which will be nice because then you, you know that the beginning balances are right in that they tie into the prior year, but also can be a problem because when you're trying to figure out a system of how to put the data input and some of the stuff is already populating for you, then you, then you got to figure out what's being populated. What's the system doing for you? What, what is it not doing for you? And how can you put the data input process in, in, a, in a systematic way?